So our research question is actually how the uh, structure of electricity supply in different countries is related to the well-being of the citizens or more specifically whether there is such a relationship and then if there is how it uh, does look like in more detail. The background to this kind of research is the fact that many countries in Europe and also worldwide are currently undertaking restructuring of their electricity supply or partly also energy supply more generally, partly driven by the phenomenon of climate change. Much of the greenhouse gases is related to ener energy use and what we observe is that different countries pursue quite different strategies in this regard. For example, in Germany and also in Switzerland, there is the strategy of the so-called Energiewende, which entails that uh, renewable energies are going to be phased into the system in an accelerated fashion, whereas nuclear power is going to be phased out and coal, of course, as well. If we look at France and the United Kingdom uh, in comparison to that, they also try to minimize greenhouse gases, but their strategy is to uh, stick to nuclear power and even to, uh, to build new nuclear power stations. Now the uh, aspect which we study is of course not is there a direct relationship between those structures and the well-being of the citizens, but rather an indirect one because uh, the different supply technologies have their different characteristics, their advantages and drawbacks which relate to the costs and the environmental aspects and also to safety and uh, nuclear uh, safety issues. For example, coal, which is a big driver of greenhouse gases, is a relatively inexpensive way of uh, producing energy, but it's a, it's a dirty one. It's associated not only with greenhouse gases, but also with uh, air pollution, which may be detrimental to health. On the other hand, the renewable energies, they avoid those difficulties, but they are relatively expensive, or at least they were relatively expensive in the past. And with respect to nuclear power, there is the unresolved issue of uh, nuclear waste disposal, and also there is the fear or the perception that this is a risky technology. This latter perception was, was uh, spurred, of course, by the nuclear meltdown in Fukushima in Japan in 2011. And therefore the question arises as to how those technologies are to be evaluated in a comparative fashion. And our specific approach to addressing this question is to ask whether there are relationships between those technologies and their characteristics on the one hand and the well-being of the citizens on the other. So having described our research question, of course the question arises, how can we really measure citizen well-being or if you want to put it that way, how can we measure welfare? It's well known that over much of the 20th century economists have, quite, have been quite uh, skeptical about the possibility to measure utility or welfare in any meaningful way and much of economic research was in fact uh, was in fact able to be conducted without having to really do that. But on the other hand, there remain several questions for which it is quite useful to have an empirical measure for well-being and what has come uh, to be established over the last two decades or so and has been accepted even in economics was that it is possible to use subjective data from social surveys which typically ask for people's life satisfaction as an empirical proxy to measure welfare. There has been complementary research, for example, by psychologists, which uh, led to the conclusion that those data are really something reliable and sound. And increasingly, this was being introduced in economics as well. For example, there have been studies of the relationship between uh, well-being in this subjective sense and some macroeconomic indicators. And what we do is to conduct a similar analysis with respect to the electricity supply structure. So we ask whether we can establish a statistical uh, 
relationship between the life satisfaction of the citizens and those aspects of electricity supply. Specifically, we use data for about 140,000 individuals in 25 European countries. Starting from 2002, those data were taken from a survey which is conducted regularly, the European Social Survey, and using these data uh, and combining them with uh, information on the electricity supply structure in the different countries permitted us to conduct and to establish uh, whether there are such statistical relationships, always keeping in mind that, of course, correlations are to be taken with care. So it is very important to control for potentially confounding factors. For example, it could be that renewable energies are more widespread in rich countries. And this tells us that uh, such characteristics and potentially confounding factors are to be included in our analysis. But in the end, what we do is to run so-called life satisfaction regressions, where we have the life satisfaction as a dependent variable. We have the shares of the different electricity supply technologies as our main dependent variable. And of course, we have a whole battery of control variables, which give us that uh, methodological safety that I just described. In our research, there are uh, quite a couple of findings, some of which I would describe as the big points. And then, of course, there are also some more differentiated types of analysis. So the main finding is that is a finding which is not so straightforward, namely that there is, in fact, a, a systematic and uh, statistically significant relationship between the supply structure and well-being. And then, of course, uh, the interesting question is, how does this uh, relationship look like? And looking at it from this point of view, what we did find is that certain types of renewable energies are, in fact, associated with more well-being. This applies in particular to solar energy and wind energy. And also it applies to, for example, natural gas, whereas uh, electricity generation from coal and from nuclear power plants is more disli disliked in terms of citizen well-being. And if we look at all of those uh, general results from a still somewhat more specific uh, point of view, then we can, uh, for example, find that not all of the nuclear energies are alike, whereas solar and wind power are positively related to well-being. This does not apply, for example, to biomass because, for example, uh, biomass plants are associated with odor nuisance, for example. And even if we look at wind energy, we find that when you have a wind park in your, in your neighborhood or in your, in your region, then this typically goes with lower subjective well-being. But when we now try to align the two levels of analysis, the macro level, so to speak, and the micro level with one another, then we find there are some negative aspects of wind energy. But when we compare this type of technology with uh, nuclear energy or coal-based electricity generation, then uh, overall, on balance, those negative aspects of wind power are not as important to undermine the general uh, positive effect that we found for the uh, new kinds of renewable energies like wind and solar energy. And especially what one can also add is the fact that the negative effects from wind parks are transient. Mainly they disappear after some three or four years after the construction of the wind parks. And this uh, is something which also contributes to the overall result that uh, there's a relatively favorable effect of the, those types of technologies, at least in the intermediate to long run. As far as the relevance of our research is concerned, maybe one can note that uh, using such subjective data is not only a trend in research, as I explained it previously, but it is also something which has spilled over to the political sphere. For example, using such uh, 
measures of well-being has been advocated by some publications of the OECD. The UK Office of Statistics has also embraced uh, using or at least uh, specifying and showing such data and also in France there has been uh, a commission established by the then President Sarkozy which was uh, whose aim it was to think about alternative measures or complementary measures for the traditional uh, national accounts and in the, uh, those exercises the use of subjective uh, data was also something which was recommended and looking at it from this perspective our research which applies this to a uh, question of energy supply I think fits in quite well not just with the uh, with the research climate, but also with uh, its perception in the political sphere. And in fact, uh, what we did find, uh, namely that there is a clear relationship, a significant and systematic relationship between questions of energy policy and uh, citizen well-being, or if you want to call it uh, welfare, then I think this is uh, something uh, which is indeed something that uh, is relevant in particular against the background mentioned in the beginning that there are those uh, restructurings of the energy supply structure going on in many countries. If we look at the future, I think there are quite some uh, aspects of uh, our research area that could be uh, considered in a more detailed way. For example, up to this point, we assume that uh, people in all countries that we studied have the same relationship towards uh, the electricity supply, but of course that might be different in different countries and this is something that one could look at. Another point that may be worthwhile is that uh, the important uh, aspects of the energy transition is not just only the supply, the generation of electricity, but it's also the transmission and we know that there are many, many public debates about high voltage power lines, for example. So therefore it would be quite interesting to look at this as well. Other aspects are how did changes in the costs, for example, of photovoltaic uh, energy, which dropped considerably in the last a uh, couple of years, how did, did this change the uh, relationship between well-being and the different supply structures? And therefore, I think uh, there is quite some potential for future research along uh, those lines, which we started to study uh, in a first step, so to speak. <laughs>